What's up, Crypto Crew, and welcome back, or if this is your first time, I'm Captain Crypto Might, actively escaping the Matrix, scoping out the crypto ocean, so if you like your odds, get on the boat, stay up to date, thumbs up, and join the hunt. Into the boat! Crypto Crew, at the making of this recording, the price per Casper coin is low, that is either an opportunity for Caspians or new investors to buy, not financial advice, do your own research, or it is just hold until further ado. Meanwhile, there are many rules rumors about spot listings but nothing has come to fruition or is concrete just yet to be continued in other words. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Today we'll talk more about VProgs. We'll let Ankit of the XXIM podcast give his take on his close to 90-minute session with Michael Sutton on VProx. There was a monthly meetup for the month November in Israel where Casper Core developer Michael Sutton himself took the honors to further explain VProx. What is important is that VProx is not just revolutionary for Caspa, but also for the crypto ocean as a whole. Thus, it is important for us to continue to study, to show ourselves approved, and to grow in knowledge and understanding of the fundamentals that make Caspa. You fall behind and you're on your own. Prove all things, hold fast, that which is good. Keep your Caspa coins, bitcoins, and other crypto investments safe through self custody. And in our opinion, your best option is the Tangent Wallet. Plug and play, easy to use, and the most affordable cold storage out there. Now, for a limited time, you can get 20% off using codes Crypto Crew and WHFEXT10. Link in the description box below. Thanks so much for your consideration. And support in advance and may the lord jesus christ bless you all what if i told you that ethereum's biggest problem isn't speed or cost it's sovereignty one of the yeah, challenges in ethereum right now is like we have these l2 ecosystems and the l2 ecosystems have been scaling quite well their technology has been improving quite well but there's a lot of challenges with fragmentation and if we want to try to reduce those challenges with fragmentation then like we need to do things to actually make optimism and arbitrum and zk sync and polygon and like all of these uh, different parts of the bigger ethereum world actually actually feel like they're parts of one Ethereum world instead of feeling like they're separate chains. So today, withdrawing from Optimism or Arbitrum uh, takes a withdrawal period of uh, one week. This causes a lot of problems, and uh, what we want to try to do is we want to try to uh, reduce that all the way down to one slot. Here's the issue with current L2s on Ethereum, like base, Optimism, Arbitrum, they trap you in two-dimensional bundles. Because if you have two-dimensional space where apps are within a roll-up entity like base, arbitrum, and other than Ethereum, if you're an app, you're benefiting from the fact you can compose with different entities, with different other contracts on your specific roll-up. You loan against some kind, or you provide liquidity from your token to some swapping service or some DEX. Then if you would want to compose with a different app sitting on arbitrum, you'd have to move your app to that place and make sure you have the same kind of services and liquidity. You're kind of tied to this bundle. So the two dimensions create, let's say, an unsound space where you're not free to, it's not a zero sum game or it's not a, a healthy competition between applications, but applications have these constraints that come from the fact that they're part of another of a, of a bundle and the liquidity doesn't necessarily move easily between two uh, order of entities. Your favorite app is stuck executing everyone else's transaction. Your state size depends on others and you are suffering from the noisy neighbor problem and it's killing unified liquidity. If you read Jonathan already, like he has a blog post from 2020 about the Ethereum uh, supernova and the, the fragmentation problem within Ethereum and how he, he was thinking that it might be unsolvable because Ethereum reached this fragmented state. Whatever effort you do, there's too much interest already and you cannot redesign the system and, and fix it. Um, 
So he wanted to do it correctly on Casper from the setup. Over the past year, we've been uh, doing these cross L2 interoperability initiatives. Uh, so we started really paying attention to this problem in the uh, summer of last year. And the two big things that we started focusing on, one of them is uh, cr uh, chain specific addresses. So the address should contain the uh, chain that the address is on. And the other is uh, intent based bridging, right? So basically the idea is, if I have one ETH on Optimism and I want to move that one ETH to Arbitrum, I don't have to go and wait one week myself. Instead, what I can do is I can put the one ETH on Optimism into a smart contract, and then in that smart contract, it automatically yeah, gives that ETH to whoever first provides a proof that they sent the one ETH uh, through a contract to my destination address on Arbitrum. Right? So basically, you're offloading the work of actually transferring the ETH and actually moving, th moving it through all one to a separate class of market makers. The challenge is that liquidity is expensive, right? Basically, what we're saying is that if you want to move one ETH from Optimism to Arbitrum, then unless there are a lot of people who are constantly moving back and forth in roughly equal proportions, you're basically requiring some liquidity provider somewhere to lock up that one ETH for a week, and uh, they're not able to do something else with it. This is expensive. This basically means that, especially for larger transfers, uh, transaction fees uh, go for going from one L2 to another L2 are needlessly high. Think about it. If you want to compose with an app on a different L2, you have to bridge, you have to move liquidity and then hope that same service exists there this is not healthy competition it's an artificial constraint we progs are trying to solve this by creating three different types of sovereignty execution time sovereignty state size sovereignty and third proving sovereignty execution time sovereignty basically you only need to compute your own transactions not everyone else's transaction so no more noisy neighbors. Second, state-size sovereignty. Your storage requirements don't depend on other programs. Third, the proving sovereignty. You can prove your program's validity without waiting for or depending on others to prove first or others to prove their first. But here is the magic. We procs achieve this sovereignty without sacrificing composability. It's a huge thing, and that's the true breakthrough, guys. We procs still manage to keep achieve the sovereignty without sacrificing composability. You know, traditional blockchains force you to choose either you have to choose the siloed and sovereign approach or you are composable, but then traps you in a shared execution environment. But if you think about it, we do have one canonical order, and that's very powerful because if we have one canonical order we actually have one consensus for the entire global state even if it's fragmented even if it's siloed you can like attribute a point in time to each transaction right so for each, every point in time we actually have a deterministic a well-defined state of the entire l2 space that attribute can be used to conceptually create sync composability because if there's a degree state while executing a transaction it's very clear deterministically what's the state of all others you can actually imagine a design which uses this to actually read from multiple places and actually uh, compose a uh, logic. Caspa layer one sequences everything with canonical ordering. There is a deterministic global state every point in time. This means programs can synchronously compose reading and writing to each other atomically while still remaining sovereign entities. The program owner decides the business model. They choose the proving frequency and control the computational resources. It's sovereignty of the service provider, as Michael puts it. You just need 1% of the hash rate to maintain sovereignty. That's the power of Caspa 100 blocks per second vision. But sovereignty does mean obligation. If you have a stake in the program, you maintain it, you keep it live, you ensure it progresses. But other entities cannot hold you hostage. That's what true decentralization is. This is more than just a technical architecture. It's about creating one dimensional liquidity space where programs compete fairly without artificial constraints. It's about fixing what Michael calls it, Ethereum's unsolvable fragmentation problem. We procs for me represent a fundamental rethinking of L2 design in a way that mimics L1 experience with L2 scalability. The intention here is that L1 remains the hub 
of folks. You deploy them on L1, you obviously execute them not on L1, but because they're atomically and synchronously composable, the experience should be as if they are on L1. That's like the user experience and the dev experience. It should be like this unified space. And in that sense, you want to say they are L1. They are very native. Like L1 is doing a whole lot of effort to maintaining information so that they compose. Okay, so the fact that L1 technically isn't executing, it's still doing so much to create this unified one-dimensional space where everyone can interact with each other. So hopefully it, it creates the feeling of an L1. Crypto Crew, you can check out the full session of Michael Sutton with Unkid of the XXIM podcast in the link below. And you can catch the whole live stream of the November meetup in Israel, of which Michael Sutton's presentation was a part. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Stick around. Fix your mind before you get to the grind. And with that said, let's continue to escape the matrix. Let's continue to be on the lookout for the next big thing here on the Crypto O. Ocean, grow in grace and let's make some crypto waves. Say I.